All right, so this is what I've got so far. Um, I'm working on building an arcade cabinet, and I want it to be uh, kind of, you know, somewhat functional. So I want you to be able to sit down, you know, sit down right here and play like uh, sitting in front of a couch. Now, what you really can't see is this part right here is the screen. It's a 32 inch monitor. What I can't really show is that it's actually going to go from laying flat to swiveling up. All right. So you can either play it laying flat or all the way up, just like a, like a Vuelix Japanese style arcade. Um, so this is kind of, and I, I don't really know how to put the controls in here. I'm not that good with this yet, but you can see this is the control deck right here. Everything's going to go. And uh, obviously I haven't done anything with the back yet. Uh, this is where all the components are going to go. Speakers, um, computer, and all, all the other stuff and whatnot. But yeah, this is, this is basically it. I think this is going to be a final design here. Cool. I'm starting the arcade cabinet build. I know the lines are kind of hard to see, but here they are. There's the um, controller area. It's going to angle down so your feet will have some room. And then here's the, the legs. Um, so the overall, this whole square is basically 30 by 30. And uh, I kind of I, I drew in all the, the hard lines. I basically just used a roll of electrical tape to draw in these radiuses or radii in these areas. Because once I cut up this first one, my plan is just to use a flush cut bit on a router and just make a carbon copy of the, of the other one. So I'm just getting this fleshed out tonight. Um, is what, December 20. 7th, 7th, 28th, something like that. And um, yeah, I'm going to cut it out with a jigsaw tomorrow and then um, use uh, the router and cut out the other one and should be good to go from there. All right, so I am working on the second side of the panel. I've got the first one cut out right here. Uh, I found that if you make, because I have to use a jigsaw for everything, not super fun, making these relief cuts right around here in the the radii in the corners tends to help out quite a bit. My kid's helping me too. I don't know what she's going to do yet, but she'll figure it out. So I'm going to cut out this other side right here. Should be a mirror image of that. I might have the belt sand the top because I don't know if you can tell. There's a little bit of variance. There's, there we go. A little bit of variance along the top here, just by virtue of using a jigsaw and not having a lot of tools in a relatively small space. So see how this works. All right, so um, since I last recorded, I went ahead and I cut out the other side. Then I went ahead and used a roundover bit, a uh, quarter inch roundover bit uh, along everything here. So it's all, so there's a little, little crap right here. I don't have to work that out with combination of sanding and wood putty, but I'll take care of that. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been rounded off, so it's all smooth and everything. So here's the other one over here. Yeah. There we go. So yeah, it's all been rounded off so it looks nice and professional-ish. So that's kind of the end of, uh, you know, day one, essentially. And uh, tomorrow, my plan is to assemble the rest of it, basically. We can get it all put together and uh, see how it looks. So, I uh, finished up most of the bezel right now. So, the interior dimensions are 30 by 18, and it's going to hold a 32-inch uh, flat-screen TV. <clears throat> I was going to use a nail gun, because I happen to have one, and I happen to have the correct size nails, wherever those things are. Right here, one and a quarter-inch nails, which works really good for three-quarter-inch MDF. But, I found that it will split the wood if you just use nails. So I just did pilot holes and did screws and whatnot. I added in uh, 90 degree uh, braces in the back. So the plan, let's move this here. So the plan is when you're sitting at the, uh, the arcade, you'll have your bull nose right here. And I'll have, I have some gas struts, but basically I'll be able to lift it up. I haven't determined the angle it's gonna be at, but basically this monitor will be able to lift up. So here it is in all of its glory. So I went ahead and you know me, my router, smoothed off the edges. Kind of got chewed up a little bit here, but nothing a little, nothing a 
little wood filler and a positive attitude can't fix. So smooth everything out so it looks all professional when it's extended. The next step is I gotta put a brace across here, all the way across, and I'm gonna tap the four holes for the, what is it, visa mount, reverse mount, whatever it is for the TV, and I'll just screw the TV in there. So that'll be the next step. But there she is. I put the TV, um, you know, inside the box here. It's not mounted to anything. I'm really just kind of looking at spacing and stuff like that. Um, so here's the four mounts that I'm going to use rather than coming up with some really super elaborate, weird corner mounting system like I've seen other people do. I'm just going to do a strap of wood and uh, just basically tap holes. I need to figure out what kind of holes, what kind of screws these take. Probably use one inch ones to go all the way through the three quarter inch MDF. Um, what I'm trying to figure out, I, I think I know what I'm leaning towards is do I do a piece of wood going this way all the way across or do I do a piece of wood right here? Um, if I did it all the way across, it leaves exposed all these connectors here that I'm going to be needing. All right. Um, the downside is if you think about what I'm going to be doing with this screen, how it's going to be lifting up, you know, like this, uh, I feel like there's going to be a lot of, uh, I don't know, the word torsion. Is that maybe the word I'm looking for? Where this wood right here is going to bow and flex. So I, I think what I'm going to do is actually go down across here. Now, uh, I'm not a thousand percent positive if that's what I'm going to do because there's these heat vents here that I don't particularly want to cover up. But then how much heat is my TV really going to be generating? So that's kind of the other the other thing here. But I think I'm going to go like this. That's going to be about 18 and an eighth of an inch long and about five inches wide is what I'm going to be doing. So that's kind of where I'm at. So I did basically exactly what I said I was going to do. So this is going to be a vertical mount, and it's going to fit, you know, right inside here, just like so. <clears throat> so uh, I guess it doesn't really matter what's the top or the bottom, but um, I went ahead and found the center point between the two corners, so it's 30 inches across, so 15 inches. And if you circle around here, I marked the same over there. Man, I'm telling you, if you don't have a speed square, you're... Yeah. You're super messing up in life here. So anyways, I found the center points there. Then I took my board. Of course, I routed it. You know me. Um, <clears throat> and then I marked the center point on here. So it's six inches wide. So I just, you know, put a line down the center. So I did some rough measurements. This thing should actually come up from the back about three quarters of an inch. In order to make the TV flush, you're pretty close to it. So, of course, because I'm using three quarter inch MDF, just drop it down there. And I line these lines up here. A little bit of arranging, good to go, good to go. And I can go in here and tap my, you know, just put my screws there, okay? And then from there, I will figure out exactly where these, uh, where these uh, four holes are gonna go for the TV. So I'm not gonna glue this in um, because I need it to be able to kind of, uh, actually I might glue it in, I don't really know yet. Hmm, decisions, stay tuned. So it's mounted now. The bottom, so the TV's not perfectly flat, so the bottom I actually had to mount a quarter of an inch further in than I did the top, so the TV lays perfectly flat. So the next thing that I'm doing, now that I have the, the bezel, the surround built for the TV, is I need to figure out how wide this whole thing's going to be. And then my plans, I had originally anticipated being uh, between 30 and 32 inches. All right, but everything is obviously based upon the dimensions of the screen, because the screen's going to fold inside. That's going to determine length of the whole thing. So the other thing I got to think about is these right here. These are called knife hinges. All right. And this is what I'm going to be using, uh, for the, for, so the TV can swivel upwards. So these right here, if you look, I'm going to get a good angle. There are just a, they're just about, let's see here. Looking at it with my eye. They're just about three eighths of an inch. So I need to have enough room in order to mount these so it swings up and down. So if the total length of this here is, let's see. Okay, looking good, looking good. Total length right here is 31 and a half, basically exactly, so I gotta add three quarters of an inch onto that. So it's gonna be 32 and a quarter inches wide because there's gonna be two hinges. So three eighths times two is six eighths, three quarters. So that's gonna give me my final width for everything but so far so good so i got the two pieces put together kind of um i only got 
the essentially the tray where the monitor is going to lay down inside of here. Um, you can see I cut in these openings right here. Cut in these openings right here because the shocks, the gas shocks that are going to push the monitor up, they're going to come in through here. I may have sized them a little bit big, but uh, oh well, say levy. I got to tighten that up a little bit actually. Um, but yeah, this is kind of where we're at. This is the overall shape of it. Tomorrow I'll work on the bullnose. I didn't get nearly as much done as I wanted to today, but yes. So I think this is day four or five, I guess. I don't really know, but I went and added this piece on the top here. Uh, so this is where the monitor is going to be basically. And then I had to bring it out to meet the corner here. Uh, this is where the bull nose is going to begin, the control panel. So I've, I've come to find out that I think everybody is great woodworkers as long as everything is in 90 degree angles. Um, but when you start doing weird stuff like this, I didn't really think about it. I'm not super confident in this. So I use the angle finder on my phone to figure it out. So basically I need to, in order to cut this, to have a piece of wood come across here and this be perfectly straight, it's a 14 degree angle roughly. And that would mean I'll have the end cap whoosh, right here. Uh, so that's kind of my plan. So what I'd like to do is my, my vision is to have wood here, wood here, and then of course all the way down. And then this top piece, the control panel just lift out is one board. So it's going to rest on these supports that I put in here. So I hope it works out the way, uh, you know, I'm planning it does. We'll find out more to follow. The saga continues. So we have one, two, three, four attempts at the control panel or the bull nose. Told you I wasn't super thrilled with these angles. Let me get this on here. There. There is the control panel. Okay. I just got to do here, here, and do the beauty board right across here. Cut in some speaker holes down there. But yeah, this is it. So this part's a little bit lower than I wanted to. That's fine. We're going to shim this up, plane it down. It'll be all smooth, hopefully. Um, at least that's the plan. So... There, fourth freaking time is a charm. That was a ton of wasted wood. Hopefully I can reuse that elsewhere in this project. It's taking shape slowly but surely. Just finished up the front of the bull nose. Still got a little bit of glue coming out right there. Eee, yucky. All right, so anyways, got the bull nose wrapped. Had a little cracking here, filled in with some glue. Got that taken care of, uh, wipe that off. You gotta flush this out a little bit. Uh, after that should be good. So here's the control deck. It's two 14 angle cuts. Go ahead and drop it in like so. Sorry for the shaky camera work. And bang it in. Little, I gotta shim this side up a little bit, but the point is, is that it works, okay? A um, little bit of fine tuning right here. Get this flushed up. Get it flushed up. There's kids. So once I get this thing flushed up and whatnot, we should be good to go. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. This whole thing will be wrapped in vinyl, so it should serve to kind of puff this out a little bit so it's nice and smooth. But so far, so good. Now it's just time to work on the underneath. All right, back with prob number 194. So you can see right here the lines of where I'm going to have my panels, right? Here, and then there's a beauty board here. So you can see how close this beauty board gets. It essentially butts right up against this tray. So... Problem is, all my control electronics are going to be inside this area. So the question of the day is, how do I get my electronics, my because uh, I'm going to go to uh, USB converters. Uh, how do I get these wires down to this cavity, this cavity down here where the Raspberry Pi and uh, and everything's going to the power supply is going to be? How do I do that? So because I'm a little bit late in the game to re-engineer this thing, I'm basically going to use a router and I'm totally going to freehand a half inch channel down here and through the bottom. All right, that should give me enough clearance to uh, run wires. There is the router, half inch by half inch. Okay, so uh, just going to freehand it and wing it. It's going to look probably ugly, but I swear I will take a video as soon as I'm done. All right, well, don't, uh, don't ever do what I did. Will it work? Sure. Does it look even remotely close to professional? 
not a chance. But I guess the question remains, will wires pass through it? Yeah, they will. Thank God this thing will be covered up. That is shameful looking. I, I feel bad my child watched me do this. End of day uh, four or five, something like that. Not really sure at this point. Oh, got some glue I gotta clean up there. Anyways, so got the control deck done, the bull nose for the most part. I still gotta do the flat piece underneath there, but basically I got this done. These are the layouts I'm gonna use so you can kinda get an idea of what it's gonna look like here. Um, I got this beauty board done in the front. You know me, routed it round, made it all pretty looking. Walking around here, uh, I just put the bezel inside here. The bezel is actually going to sit up. See how it's sitting at the bottom of the tray here? It's actually going to sit up at the top when it's in its up position. Um, so it's going to be a little bit higher than this. I may have it kick back at an angle like so. Mike, you want to do me a favor? Can you reach up there? Is it possible for you to lift that thing up? Reach, Lift the bezel up a little bit? No, probably not. Come here. All right, because I love you all so much, I'm going to try to get, put, hey, so keep the camera on here, just on that. I'm going to, there we go. I'm going to try, let me tell me on camera, show you approximately what it's going to look like. So it should be up higher like this. It's probably going to kick back like so when it's in this up position. Otherwise, it's going to be laying down flat. And we should be able to use it like a coffee table or something. So that is where we are at today. I'm actually pretty pleased with the progress that I've made today. The only things I got to do now, so I can set the panel underneath there, coming around back, do a, a floor, floor piece right here, and then a, a door. Have a gas shock, lift it right up. Like so, oh, baby's going nuts. Hmm. Baby's going bananas. All right, end of day uh, four or five, whatever it is. Captain's log, start date 12.31.2019. Progress goes slowly, as I've learned is the usual for me. Here it is, uh, cabinet's on its side right now. <clears throat> I, uh, let's see, I guess I can explain what I did here. Um, so today I managed to get in this bottom panel. Let me turn this sideways so you can kind of see what it looks like. So that's the back, and um, <clears throat> this will be the, the shelf here. I uh, just got to put in a door, a hinge door. I'm going to put a gas strut right inside here so the door just goes whoosh, and opens up whenever you grab it. That's kind of the plan at least. Um, so yeah, it's held in by two screws here, two screws on the other side. And then on the front where this beauty board is, um, this part I went ahead and added two screws in the front just to keep the whole thing pulled together nice and tight. So yeah, it continues. All right, major milestone for today at least. Got that piece installed underneath the bull nose. It's all nice and, and flush and everything like that. Of course, I got that board done. I mentioned that earlier. Coming around back. Sorry about the hand. Got the tray put in. Next step is this door. Should be about, I don't know, what was it? 18 inches down. It doesn't matter. The point is I'm going to get the door put in. I'm going to try to get it hinged up to get those things put in there. The next step is going to be... Uh, Actually, no, I gotta jolt the speakers first. But yes, basically, the, the front of the cabinet looks done-ish and nice. Getting there. Speaker holes mounted. Thank God I happen to have a, uh, a three and a half inch hole cutter. So that worked out perfectly. Kinda went five inches down, five inches in, there was my center point, and uh, went all the way across, so. I initially thought about doing the speakers up here, but I don't know. Just, I guess I didn't think that was unique enough. So there we go. Fe speakers are going to fire down at your shins. I got the monitor bezel mounted in place with knife hinges, as you can see. So it swivels up. And what you can't see is the gas shocks that I have. So Mike, if you would, just go ahead and lift it up. And this is the system back here that is going to press it up. So it lowers down and then you can just lift it right up like that. So when you're sitting, the monitor is right in front of you. All right, so now I am going to install my power switch. 
um, just like a regular computer. Power cable plugs into here. There's a fuse that's, uh, sorry, it's, it's actually right here. It's this front piece right here. And there's a, uh, the actual switch itself goes right there. It'll snap into place. I don't want to do that yet, obviously. I want to wire it first. Um, oop, crap. So go ahead and I'm going to install it here on the right-hand side as you're sitting on the cabinet, sitting at the cabinet. And yeah, that's, that's the next step. So a combination of drill bits, saw or drill bits, drill and jigsaw should get this thing cut out. It's two inch by one inch. Pretty simple. I'm still incredibly happy about the, the gas shock system. Thanks Micah for coming up with that. I was about to quit until she's like, Oh, put it under the center. And I'm like, that's not going to work. And then it worked. So ta-da. Yeah. Coming along pretty nicely. End of day five or six or whatever it is. Here you have it sitting up on top of my little four by four workbench. Or not even that, probably three by three. So I got the bezel mounted. I got the gas shocks installed. So it holds the monitor up at a super convenient angle. And then as you can see this patching here, I've sanded everything with my daughter. And we filled in all the holes. Looks kind of ugly now, but we're going to sand and seal tomorrow. I am also going to be... Oh, I also cut in the, the spot for the power thing, the power plug. I am also going to be finally drilling out and setting up the uh, control panel. So this is kind of what it looks like. Here's a sweet side profile here. Uh, the monitor could be up maybe a hair higher, but I was restricted by the, the throw or the thrust or whatever, the, the distance that the shocks um, can, can push up. So this is kind of about as far as they're going to go. Um, but here we are. So I actually made a good bit of progress. I didn't do the back, the back door. I got kind of obsessed with doing the finishing work and everything. The back door may come later. We'll see what happens. I have my control panel right here. Um, I'm just using these very basic templates. I got these from slagcoin.com. They have many different kinds. So I have uh, six buttons for mine, not eight. Um, I kind of wish I would have got a kit with more buttons, just something to think about. So I'm basically going to have one player, two player here somewhere, and uh, then the six buttons and the two and the joystick. Um, so obviously two sets of those. But this is kind of how I'm laying it out right here. I went ahead and found the center point of this entire thing, and I just kind of started off four inches from the edge. So four inches from the edge here, and then four inches from the center point here. Um, and that was kind of my, my thought process. We'll see how it turns out. Um, yeah. I cut the first couple of holes. Um, so a couple problems I'm, I'm seeing already. So there was, I think, a, a flaw in my thought process to basically divide this perfectly in half and, and find the center point and then uh, issue each player an equal amount of real estate. It sounds, it makes sense on paper, but now here's, here, here's the problem I'm running into. So I still have to add a player one and player two button, right? So initially I was thinking putting it right here. But if you look, if you put it right here, it's not exactly, uh, I guess symmetrical, it's not really symmetrical in the sense that this player right here doesn't have as much purchase space for their hand if there's a button right there, even though this button is you know just off center and the other button is just off center. So I was thinking about putting a player two here and player one there, but that just looks kind of weird because it's, again, it's not, it's not even. Maybe I'm thinking about this way too hard. Not quite sure yet. Um, the other thing I didn't think about is with me dividing it down the center, what I should have done, because I plan on putting a trackball in, I, I didn't, uh, for whatever reason, I just didn't do it for this build. I'm going to put a trackball in. So it's going to go, you know, roughly right here. But that looks goofy because it's right next to this joystick. So I have to center it here. Okay, but that's off center. So you see my dilemma? Another thing I learned, and you pros out there should probably already knew this. But um, for MDF, totally don't use a spade bit. Not the best. Maybe use a hole saw or invest the money in like a Forstner bit. Or just don't use freaking MDF for the control panel. Maybe plywood would have been smarter for me to do. But you live, you learn. So I got the control panel inside the house right now. I just went ahead and dry fit all the buttons to make sure that they, uh, the spacing looks good. Uh, you can see what I ended up doing here with the player one and two. I just figured, screw it, just do something kind of goofy. Just do it how I want to. I guess that's the beauty of this project. And everything seems to have turned out okay. So the joysticks, you can see they're a little bit low right now. So I'm actually going to end up, I'm going to route out the back 
of this, so they'll come up another half inch or so. Um, so that's that's the next step here. So I'm going to trace those out. Well, it's turned out pretty good. January 1st, 1.25 p.m. I repatched all the holes because the, the filler was water-based, so it sunk in a little bit. Went over that again. Sanded it. Resanded the whole thing. Cut out a back door. Just a square. Disassembled all the hardware. Now I'm moving on to the weirdest thing I've ever done. Sealing it. So I've read a number of places online um, that to seal the uh, end grain of MDF or an exposed area, you should use either shellac, lacquer, or a mixture of 50-50 wood glue and water, which is what this is right here. So got myself a brush, took it from my wife, and I'm going to go over uh, all exposed MDF. By exposed, I mean like where it's been cut, sanded, routed, the end grain, whatever. I'm also probably going to paint over the, um, the patch with this stuff as well. So we'll see how this goes. This might officially be the most boring thing I've ever done. So you can see here, I went and sealed up. I mean, the, the goal was really just to get the, the exposed areas, like the end grain and all that. Um, I did the entire panels, the whole bull nose, you know, right across the top. You can't really tell, but this is all sealed up here. Same thing around there where I routed. I don't have a compelling reason why I did that, but I did. So... I didn't do the beauty board down here, like that kick plate, uh, mainly because I was just tired of doing it, and I don't think it's going to matter a whole heck of a lot. Uh, I was really mainly concerned about the side panels, and again, this it doesn't look like it in the video, but uh, this has definitely been sealed, sealed up. Uh, so I did that. Here's the control panel. I just finished putting a coat um, all along the edges and the top. I'm going to hit the back next. Once that dries, I can flip it over. Uh, we got the bezel, so all the exposed areas. Oh, excuse me. Um, all the patching is done. The door here, the sides are done there. So, very soon, the next step will actually be to start painting, which is kind of what I've been, you know, wanting to do for a while. So, we shall see. Ladies and gents, here it is. It's about 11 o'clock, January 2nd. Today is the day for priming. I like to get two coats of oil-based primer on here. Check out the blowout on the back of my panel. God, don't ever use spade bits. Or at least put a piece of wood behind your stuff whenever you're using them. Anyways, so I got everything set up. This is just the back door. I'm not super worried about it. So control panel, back door flap, the actual arcade unit itself. Back here behind this door, we have the monitor bezel. I kind of ran out of real estate in my uh, carport here. I didn't want to go too far out here. I didn't want to get any overspray on my car, so I'm trying to keep it localized. So I got the uh, HVLP gun assembled. Walk in here. Got it assembled. Ready to go. It's a sweet purple color. So I know it's probably not the greatest thing in the entire world. It's from Harbor Freight, but uh, I, I figured for just spraying something and getting a relatively even coat, this should do the job. And I've got uh, oil-based kills. And uh, I'll show you the actual paint itself. There it is. Right here, high gloss safety red Rust-Oleum. I was doing a little bit of research, you know, online as all people do. And they, I, I was, I, I'm, I'm being led to believe that pure, um, unthinned Rust-Oleum provides a very good finish uh, for arcade cabinets. So I'm just going to take good advice when I see it. And give it a shot. So next video I'll do is after uh, after I prime it. And you can kind of see the, the coverage that I got with the gun. Boom. By the power and magic of video editing. It's primed. So I did get one coat uh, of primer down on everything. There's the door. Uh, using the HVLP gun, there was a, a little bit of a learning curve to it. Mainly, there's there's a couple of adjustments. Oh, man, this kind of this is annoying. Like I thought, <sighs> man, I filled those things twice, and I guess until it's shiny, it's kind of hard to see the, the dimples. I thought it was all flat. Oh well, first try, right? So, anyways, uh, using the HVLP gun was good. There was a little bit of a learning curve because there's a few adjustments 
that you uh, have to be aware of. Man, look, that's not very even. Uh, like the atomization, like setting your atomization level and stuff like that, that was kind of a pain in the ass for me. Um, so one thing I noticed about doing this is if the, the, let me go over to the gun itself. I'm going to zoom through here. Let me grab the gun and I'll show you the problem that I ran into. And uh, hopefully anybody who's trying this, you'll uh, think, it, you'll, you'll do a better job than I did. So I set the cabinet up here. Yeah, I didn't worry about all in there, just the edges here. Um, the problem is getting the gun in at, at it, because how, how long it is, look at how long it is. You got that regulator, and then you add the cord on top of it. It's hard to get below about this point. And if you spray, it's super, super uneven, as you can kind of see. So it's a real pain in the ass to, to get it. So tomorrow I'm going to, sorry about the finger, tomorrow... When this dries, I'm going to sand it and wipe it down and then do another coat. And hopefully it comes out a little bit better. Um, but there's this. Let me open this door up. And I'll show you the bezel. The bezel is kind of a pain in the ass, too. In fact, this whole thing's been a pain in the ass. Like, let's not, let's not kid ourselves here. Building these things isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world. So I got the bezel kind of done. Again, it's not perfect, but it's, it's the first coat of two. Hopefully, I'd like to not go more than that. But um, we'll see what happens. Let me spin this back around. Sorry, the video is like super shaky and, and choppy. But yeah, this is kind of where I, where I left off. Um, I'm probably just going to let it sit out overnight, you know. Um, it's not supposed to rain or anything. It smells atrocious. So, yep. Round two. So this is the second coat of primer. It definitely covered everything up a lot better. Uh, I got a, got a good coat on it. Um, one thing I will say that I did differently is uh, I kind of said screw it. And I went ahead and thinned it out a little bit with some uh, paint thinner. And I think that helped a lot. I think thinning it out really helped out the atomization when it was coming out of the gun. And gave me a much uh, more even coat. Now the bezel... I didn't go bananas inside here because honestly it's getting spray painted flat black, so I'm not gonna derp out over it. Um, but out here on the cab on the main cabinet itself, I did I did lay down some pretty healthy layers. So the first layer dried pretty quickly. Sorry, it's all white. Um, first layer dried up pretty quickly, and uh, I went ahead and sanded it down and got another coat on there, a good thick coat. And uh, I think we're doing think we're doing good. I think I am on track to start painting tomorrow morning. January 3rd, and I'm hoping to have it done by January 5th, the whole arcade, the whole thing, done. January 5th is kind of my target date, and I, I think I might actually be able to hit it here. Got the control panel done. Um, I primed it and sanded it and um, put some vinyl on it. My wife runs a very small vinyl decal business, so I have vinyl all over the place. So this is just wrapped in the fake carbon fiber vinyl. Um, got all the buttons put in. I uh, got all the, the micro switches installed, the USB encoders. Baby crying in the background. So, fun fact, if you buy these pre-made kits, they come with these pigtails. Um, I didn't think about the length of the pigtails. So, right here, my player one button. My player one button. Uh, the USB encoder is all the way over here because that was kind of a central point to all this stuff. And I didn't think about the length of these, so I had to actually bend the connectors a little bit to make them work. I also, so I also have clearance um, in my bullnose for it, but just uh, when you're doing this, just make sure to, to plan out your button layout and the location of your USB encoders and your wires very carefully. Um, overall, I am pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it looks pretty slick. So I wrapped the carbon fiber vinyl on it. And then on the back, you can see right here, there's this white vinyl. I basically just use this as a tape, you know, the um, carbon fiber, sorry about the baby, carbon fiber vinyl laid over. You can kind of see the shadow like right along here. Um, and just to keep the edges from peeling up, I just took some white vinyl, trimmed it down, laid it right over the top to keep it all nice and, and tight. So that's where I'm at today. Got the first layer of top coat put on today. Went on relatively nice, I think. So this right here is Rust-Oleum, a high gloss enamel safety red. So again, I use the HVLP gun, 
Got this on there. Cabinet's looking pretty tasty. Looking pretty good. Yeah. So I want to do I'm gonna do this coat, I'm gonna sand it down and then do a final coat. I'm I'd like to get it done tonight, but I don't know how long it'll take to dry. Alright, moment of truth. I got a uh, a template, 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter. So I'll be using this to uh, do the holes for the the TV. Just wrapped up the electrical installation. So here's a socket. Just uses a regular power cord on off switch right here. This has all been verified and tested with a multimeter uh, that all the wiring is correct. Here, it, here's what it looks like back here. Um, I think at some point I want to put a box over this just because there's a lot of exposed connectors. Uh, the door is going to have a lock on it, um, and, and that's cool, but I think just as an added safety measure in the future, I'm going to you know put a, put a block over this or so, some kind of way to guard people from touching it inadvertently. But yeah, this is it right here. So today I should have this whole thing put together. The electrical was the, the one thing I was not really concerned about, but the one thing I really didn't want to deal with because I just hate it. But it's done. Good God, we are so close to getting done. Installed the speaker grills. Um, electrical, that Raspberry Pi. So I just have to say, so this is my first time ever using a Raspberry Pi. And I, I just have to point out how stupid this looks. Like you have this huge cabinet in this itty bitty little thing right here. All right, so I use standoffs on it and whatnot. But God, it just seems like such a wasted amount of space. But say la vie. We're, uh, we're cruising along nicely here. It's looking uh, looking pretty good. Soon me and my wife are going to drag it downstairs and uh, put the monitor, mount the monitor bezel to it, get the control panel put in, and uh, fire it up, see what happens. So it looks like we're, uh, we're moving here. I guess it's loading. Let me get up. I haven't set the control board all the way in yet because I just want to make sure that I have everything set up properly. But let's see, two game pads detected. All right, so I'm gonna stop this video and try to get this set up and uh, come back when it's done. Well, ladies and gents, it is finally put together for the most part. Still doing some tweaking here and there, but you can see it's all for the most part done. Thanks to everybody who is kind of following along. I'll do a, a large video that has the whole build log in it.